Take the silver. It's no, I'm not gonna offer Take the it. silver. Uh, but the point is to read those books. Uh, those are very good books. Uh, economics, liberty, and history. Uh, okay. We have talked about federal problems. We have talked about state problems. Now let's keep it local with our own Minnesota Hockey Mama and Susan Richardson. Kick up here too, or on her sidekick, I don't know which. Um, yeah, Kirk, I don't know if you just want to, I'll just bring it in. You would not really coordinate with this. Um, up here is an example, or it is the anti bullying legislation that went through the House last session and is due to come back this um, next session. Um, so I'm just going to start the justice. Uh, President Johnson vowed to eradicate poverty. Mark Dayton has vowed to eradicate bullying. He means to do this through the work completed by the Anti-Bullying Task Force along with anti-bullying legislation that was introduced in last year's legislative session and will be introduced at the next one. Um, it did pass the House and it didn't make it all the way through the Senate. According to Walter Hudson, he was here. I get to quote him while he's here. Um, <laughs> no. And Catherine Kirsten, this anti-bullying legislation will institutionalize bullying by creating a new bureaucracy that all students, teachers, staff, parents, and anyone serving in the education system, public or private, um, would have to answer to. It would create mandates that would divert resources away from academics, while also forcing teachers into the role of thought police by requiring them to remediate children's undefined or underdefined inappropriate behavior and belief systems. <laughs> These behaviors will be reported in a climate report that will follow students for the rest of their lives. Imagine your child who was accused as a, a third grader of a bullying incident being unable to follow their chosen career path because of this report. Uh, and then during her legislative testimony, Ms. Kirsten said, well, one of the bill's most chilling aspects is that children or students who dissent from certain state-approved cultural or political attitudes who maintain, for example, that children do best when they have a parent of both sexes, a mom and a dad, could potentially be referred to counseling by school authorities for failing to sufficiently value diversity. She went on to say that HF 826 would send a message to students, at least those who belong to the so-called protected classes that they have an absolute right not to have their feelings hurt or their ideas challenged and that authorities would intervene um, if this occurs. Um, furthermore, the state would compel the education, educational system to investigate every reported incident of bullying, including anonymous accusations, which withholds due process of law, where the accused is allowed to confront their accuser. It would also permit students to harass one another by making unsubstantiated charges of misconduct without accountability. Um, it is ironic to note that in every school, um, this is an example from Washington County, that in every school district in the state, they have a code of conduct already um, right here, number seven. Under behaviors, you have bullying. Bullying means repeated acts, verbal and nonverbal, um, that are coercive and intimidating and inhibit a, inhibit a positive and supporting, a supportive learning environment. Um, and then it lists out what happens with each offense for the different grade levels. Um, so, it, you know, most school districts, all the school districts already have a bullying code of conduct that all the students must abide by. And these locally controlled codes of conduct are developed and enforced by teachers, school administrators, and our elected school board members. So why would an additional layer of intrusive enforcement be required? Is it because the schools aren't properly enforcing their own policies? Or is there something more nefarious going on? And I'll go back. Oh, that was the blank page. Oops. Um, according to Governor Dayton, there has to be somebody, some agency, and ultimately some person that is responsible. 
We have to show schools that we are serious about this. Well, Susan is going to tell you about how our schools in District 8 through 3 have decided to get real serious about this. How are we doing so far, Walter? Good. All right. Um, what I'm going to tell you is uh, actually mind-blowing, and as far as I know, it never went through the school board, and there was never any parental consent. Um, Woodbury resident Doug Ballinger was recently quoted in the Woodbury Bulletin saying that he was horribly bullied when he was growing up. This is therefore near and dear to his heart. And this is a problem that is not being fixed. Ballinger's thought process leads him to believe that adequate progress has not been made in the eradication of bullying. He also believes that each one of us has a range of tolerance of certain things. So that tolerance could be something as thick as a tree branch or as slim as a piece of spaghetti. So this is highly subjective, folks. It all depends on the victim's tolerance. However, one thing cannot be argued, he says, and that is how a person feels. To do his part in fixing this problem, he has helped to create the Bully Behavior Incident Reporting Tool app, which we will call BERT, <laughs> which he eventually intends to have downloaded on all Minnesota students' phones. Surely he's doing this out of the kindness of his heart, right? He's not doing this because the school district has incredibly deep pockets. Ballinger's vision for this tool includes a timely, accessible, and accurate bullying incident report to relevant officers and agencies. Now you notice that I use the term agencies. We're adding another level of government intrusion into our schools. These agencies will have oversight of such incidents and maybe parents too. While providing the school's usable data and platform for ensuring the right supports um, are provided for both school bully and victim alike. His goals for the app are to establish a safe environment where kids can learn and grow mentally and physically while not having to deal with his definition of bullying. He considers, that, he considers his definition of bullying is as a social distraction. And he also wants to help uh, the bullying student learn to cope and eliminate bullying behavior. Now we're going to take a look at how the app works. Um, okay. If you notice, this is the same color as the East Ridge High School colors, which are gold and black. This is actually going on at East Ridge night right now. It was put into place by Superintendent Jacobus, Principal Aaron Harper, where have I heard his name before? Um, also helped put this into place. Um, back one slide, please, so I can explain that. Okay. All right. Well, if you will notice, the first, the, on this first side over here, on the bullying report, it asks where the student was bullied. Now, up at the top, it says that the student is able to report these 24-7. In other words, this could actually be happening at home. So in the hallway, in the restroom, in the gym, in the lunchroom, the playground, on the bus, after school program, school sponsored event, or on the very bottom it has other. So this could actually be happening at home to perhaps uh, report on the parents. And you can imagine if you were able to use an app like this uh, to inform on people in your community with our militarized police. The bullying report says it could be, um, I can't really read it there because it's kind of blurry, but um, <laughs> it could be verbal, um, it could be physical, or relational. So guys, you're asking a girl out for a date that could possibly <laughs> consider bullying. It asks then if there was any type of a physical injury. Now you can imagine if a student is able, perhaps they're injured on their way to school. Maybe they're injured at home, but they come in the next day and they're actually able to bully maybe the person who, they could continue to bully another student that they're already bullying using this app. 
Um, then it, it asks for specific bullying behaviors, hit, kicked, or punched, uh, inappropriate touching. Then there's cyberbullying, so we have text messages, social network, chat room. Um, it asks for a specific uh, type of bullying. Was it racial, sexual, religious, or disability? Then uh, they get to fill in the date, um, the approximate time that it occurred, um, the name of the student doing the bullying, and any witnesses. The next slide will show you, this was, uh, here's the East Ridge High School logo. Um, talking about Superintendent Keith Jacobus, who put his trust in this potential app, and uh, Aaron Harper, who through his leadership and mentorship um, um, put this into place. And then I am very surprised that Matt Kraft is involved. Um, Assistant Principal Matt Kraft usually has better sense than this, but I guess not in this case. Um, Mr. Ballinger believes that his app will help eradicate bullying behavior. However, it would seem that a long list of abuses could occur with this technology in the hands of teenagers or adults. If there is no set definition of bullying, but instead relies on the tolerance level of the supposed victim, the number of bullying behavior incident reports will skyrocket. Furthermore, when the incident can be anonymously reported, intent is left to be determined by the victim and may not accurately reflect the situation in which the incident occurred. Also, the possibility of students, teachers, and administrators abusing this tool, either through intimidation, fear of being reported, or false reports are extremely high. This app indoctrinates children into the idea of reporting on their fellow classmates. If there are no consequences for a false report, then who is to stop those reports from happening, or eventually reporting anyone who speaks against the overriding political societal ideology of the time? Apparently, South Washington County District 833 thinks that this is a fantastic idea. They have partnered with BERT to pilot this app with East Ridge High School freshmen this year. Incidentally, South Washington County Schools is also asking for a levy referendum that, among other things, asks for money for improvement, additional of, for improvement and additional mental health staff. Now you can see where this could be very dangerous and abused, especially if that mental health staff is assigned based on the number of bullying reports that each school receives. Um, improve safety and security in the schools, along with improving technology in the district under the T3 initiative. The T3 initiative is transforming thinking through technology. Can you say iPads, folks? That's what this is all about. It would seem that the District 833 administration is all on board with this latest anti-bullying. Thought police technology and legislation. Perhaps we should ask our current school board members how and why this app is being allowed in our school district. We should also do some research to see if any of the erstwhile representatives and senators who sit on the legislative education committees are in support of the intrusion into civil liberties that this technology and the anti-bullying legislation represents. Now, you remember how everybody got... I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I don't read sign language. But um, anyway, um, we need you guys to get involved. When the gun legislation was coming down, we had a lot of people appearing at the Capitol. We want to let you know what's going on. And when we tell you what's going on, we would like you guys to get down to the Capitol so that you can react to this type of thing. Because at first they were coming for your guns. Now they are coming for your kids. That's why it's so important for you guys to make wise decisions, wise choices in who gets on this school board. Because if Leilani and I can't stop this, the least we can do is let you know what is happening. You have anything to add, Andrea? Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Yes, question. I suggest
suggestion. I've lobbied for many, many years. Make a cartoon on it. Send it all around who offered that bill. The church he goes to on the door handle the driver on the car on the driver's side. And get them around that neighborhood. And I promise you, you'll wake them up. So he's suggesting that we make a cartoon and we get out there and we find out which church this person attends who drafted this legislation and put it out in all the cars on the, in the parking lot. In the churches. In That's the churches. Point. In the churches so people know what's going on. Now you can see where this could be used to intimidate school board members too, right? Right. Or parents. Parents who complain about a Black Panther announcement at East Ridge High School, it be, could be used against them too. How about taxpayers in our community? It's time to get involved, you guys. We can't just sit here. We all need to stand up and do something. Yes? Will you elaborate on what the 833 Yes, Yes, Yes is on, oh, your, um, on the Facebook website? Yes. Uh, District 833 Yes, Yes, Yes is a group of parents supposedly, who are pushing all three referendums down your throat. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but the Middleton Elementary principal was pulled off of her job and is actually pushing for the referendums. She has contacted legislators. I have one of the emails from one of the legislators that we presented at the school board meeting. Um, she, so taxpayers now, we're not only paying for her, but also the principal to fill her shoes. Um, 833, yes, 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 is a group of parents who are working with the administration to get the word out for all of the people in South Washington County School District to vote yes for all three referendums. We do not have an organized group for 833, no, no, no. Because the Democrat machine is now in full swing. And Leilani and I are kind of out there on our own, trying to do this on our own. So we could really use some help. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Plymouth, Michigan, the radical with us, Tea Party, spends its regards. I'm from Michigan. I'm here. I just moved to Oakland from the last two weeks. And I just wanted to say I was in the curriculum committee in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And school boards, if you folks ever wanted to get involved, is where you can make a lot of difference in your local community. Okay. Get involved. This common core issue, which you probably have talked about, is where I came in late. I was coming from another function this evening. The common core initiative, everything you might have heard about it, affects all the schools. It's taking local control and setting it up for the federal government. It is a disaster. It's worse than you can imagine. I was on the curriculum committee. I've seen it. It's terrible. Yep. These people, if they need your help, and if there's not a coordinated effort, if you've ever gotten involved before, now is the time. The presidential elections are fun, but this is where it happens right now. Thank you. Yes. My question is, um, we, the taxpayers, seem to be paying for all these signs that the school seem to put up about, that they want these referendum voted yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You never, I mean, nobody ever has a sign up that says let's vote no. Well, we're paying for, and if anybody wants to vote no, it's mm -hmm. like we're paying, how, how, I guess, how do we do we need about changing that? Is there any way that we can get signs? Um, I don't know if there's any way that we can actually purchase signs that say vote no for the referendum. We, um, just, just 50 signs for me was $326. This vote yes, 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 I don't know how much money is behind them, but I'll tell you what, it'd be very interesting to see which school board members' signs go up in those exact same yards. Because I will bet that those people are being paid for by the yes, yes, yes vote. Oh, yeah. Yes, we've come. We've gone to some of those meetings. But the whole thing is, if you're in A33 or anywhere near A33, when the conferences, uh, school conferences are coming up during in the next couple of weeks, if you get into those.
schools, they are allowing the yes, yes, yes people into the schools with the table, with brochures. We did not, I mean, it's, it's been wanting to get people organized, but we are so like loosely working. I have a sign up sheet if you want to get with us. We can do some lift drops. We can fight them the weekend before the, the, the election is going to be the really important time for the no, no, no to get people out there and get out lit for people because this app and the anti-bullying bill, I mean, when we were going through the research for this stuff today and, and just over the last, every day something new comes up with 833. I, I can't even tell you, every single day. And the yes, 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 or 833, yes, yes, yes. We're trying to figure out how they're funded, if it's the union or what's behind it. The people that are involved are highly involved within the district. The one is Winnie Williams is her name, and when I asked Feldman what's the deal with Winnie Williams, why doesn't she have to pay for a Minnesota data practice request, he said, well, that's because of who she is. That's all. <laughs> that's what I got. So if you are interested, I have a sign-up sheet. I would love your email addresses. You can also get a hold of, get, get in contact with us on the East Metro Facebook page. Um, and just asking, we will get, we really need to mobilize, we need to get people out door knocking for Leilani and Sue, um, and, and get some signs in, in yards on well-traveled areas, and this no, no, no thing, I mean, the, the people are angry. They just need to get told to go out and vote, because on average, we only have 4,000 people out of the 50,000 people in our district. 4,000 are the ones who determine what your taxes are and who are on the school board. I'm sorry, that's wrong. It's pathetic. And all of us, if we grab some of our people and say, come vote with us, and here's who you need to vote for. Let's get the incumbents out. All of them. They all need to go. They're bobblehead yes men for the administration, and Jacobus knows it. So seriously, I, I would love it. You guys would be a miracle and just absolutely amazing if, if we got a ton of people that are willing to mobilize and get out there. And as well as getting help. out there, if you guys would give Superintendent Jacobus a call oh, yeah. and it, uh, Principal Aaron Harper a call and let them know what you have seen tonight and let them know how you feel about this bullying app, I would really appreciate that. Now, they hate it when they call. They, they do. Thank you very much, you guys. You've been really patient. Oh,